Today's project is inspired by this little beast here, the Beta FPV Pavo 20. I recently upgraded my Cine Whoops and one thing in particular that caught my attention was his injection molded housing for the DJI O3 Air unit. I ordered a few extra which cost US $4 each in the hope that I could put them to use. They're made from a PA12 nylon material, feel quite rigid and what I like is that the mounting nuts are integrated. It comes with all the hardware including the vibration dampening gummies. O3 costs are essentially half the build or more, right? I've been toying with the idea of being able to easily swap one out between crafts. I thought I'd try my luck at designing something that might achieve this. Jumping into SolidWorks, I first want to lay down basic footprint dimensions in a sketch. All in one mounting pattern in the center, the approximate body length and width while considering the battery, and also the prop diameter, 3.5 inch for this one. I know the lens will sit about 25 millimeters beyond the body, so I've added that in as well as a guideline showing the 155 degree field of view for the O3 camera. This allows me to visualize the prop spacing more effectively to make sure my prop sit rearward of that line. Eagle-eyed viewers might notice a specific angle I've used here for the arm construction line. The geometry is based off the 345 triangle, the smallest Pythagorean triple, a mini quad geometry made popular by Soma and Impulse RC way back in the day. As I want arms that are symmetric in nature, I'm going to make my diagonal opposing arms collinear so it locks that geometry in. Now I need to decide on clearances from the frame body and neighboring props, which often comes down to a bit of experience and a bit of guesswork. Flux capacitor, carry the two changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Fuck you, science! Just sorting through some scrap carbon pieces to find hopefully some bits that I can use to cut this prototype frame without having to bust into a new sheet. I always like to double check the dimensions of any parts that require press nuts. Uh, you get end mill wear so it can vary. So what I've done here, I've just milled three holes. Uh, the middle hole here is what the spec sheet recommends. And then I've just gone plus or minus 0.1 mil. So as you can see here, the oversized hole, as you would expect, the press nut fits in there. Um, the recommended hole, you probably still could press that in there with your fingers, so it's not ideal. So in this instance, what I think I'm gonna do is just go uh, minus 0.1 mil and that should give me the bite on the carbon that I require. With the design finalized and pieces cut, here's what I've come up with. It's a fairly basic and common design and I'm not intending to reinvent the wheel here, but focus more on the O3 housing. Two millimeter top plate with a few specific pockets I'll touch on in a bit. Simple four millimeter boomerang arms that are fixed at three points, the middle mounting point being a captive press nut. My main body plates are also 2mm with press nuts again designed for ease of assembly. The bottom using M2 press nuts for the all-in-one. As this proto was cut from scrap carbon, some pieces were gloss and others matte so I decided to give it a satin black livery for consistency. I found these silicon door buffers at my local hardware and thought I could integrate them into the top plate instead of a typical battery foam pad. These have a strong self-adhesive and fit into the 1mm deep pockets I made in the top plate. Cheap, easily replaceable and grip the battery surprisingly well. The isolation vibration gummies for the O3 housing are the same as what you would find on most FCs and ESCs. I just installed them with a pair of tweezers. Aligning the housing as seen here. Carbon weight with the housing sits at just over 50 grams, 60 grams total with the remaining hardware. Out. The motor size I'm using on the build is 1804 and I've chosen 3400 kV. These are the Pacer series from T-Motor. I've opted for the 5mm shaft version. The all-in-one is a 6S rated F722 35 amp from Beta FPV. This is the same one installed on the Pavo 35 CineWoop. It has a dedicated HD port, which is nice for what I require. Obviously, a DJI O3 Air unit for vision is what I'll be using, and Gemfan Hurricane 3525s, which you can get in two different colors. If you're using the DJI controller and RC link, this is everything you would require, but I'm adding in an ELRS diversity receiver from Radio Master for that true to the moon goodness. Check this out. was for 
flying on a completely stock Betaflight 4.5 tune, which was fine for cruising and Cine Whoop style shots like the one here of my pet kangaroo. But its limitations became apparent when getting a little more aggressive, as you can see here by the bounce back on these snap rolls and flips. A quick field tune using the UAV Tech micro preset and I was happy enough to call it done. Okay, so what I've got over here, sound recorder and the camera setup. I'm just going to do a flyby and hopefully try and pick up some of the audio. Just turn that to record. Uh, it's a bit hard, as you know, with the GoPros. There is a bit of background noise. Uh, there's a lawnmower mowing the fields. Okay, got vision. Let's go. I don't have quite the camera angle for this. I think I should uh, up it a little bit. I just had it set at about 15, 20 degrees. The complete build coming in at 200 grams. A bit unlikely to hit sub 250 in any configuration for those that really care about that. Adding a battery strap and the 4S850 milliamp hour I've been using, it ends up right around the 290 gram mark. Switching out the O3 is straightforward with the four screws. They only need to be loosened and not completely removed so they can remain with the quad itself. Leaving the cable connected to the quad, it's just a matter of disconnecting it and then mounting it on the next craft. You can see here it's a cool little self-contained O3. Installing it is simply the reverse. The screws have a hard limit too, so there's no need to worry about them being at the correct length and causing any vibrations. A completely isolated and vibration-free swappable O3 air unit. I've called this one the Pavlova 3.5. Some closing thoughts. Obviously the housing isn't very protected, so hard freestyle would see you replacing it often. But for me, it's more a cruiser that's small, compact, and relatively cheap. Let me know in the comments if swapping the O3 out is something you'd consider doing to save a bit of money, or if you think it's just a bit gimmicky. I'll also add a link to the DXF files in the description if you want to experiment with this particular design. Take care all, and I'll catch you on the next one.